Anything for? Well, nothing on the dental records. Take a look at this. What about it? That's not Julia Roberts, is it? Well, it could be. Take a look at the car. Could be theirs. When we checked with the DVLA, he didn't have a pale blue mark registered. Right. Now, this is his file on car insurance. Not listed under his name, but a company he owns. Mercedes, pale blue, circa 1983. It's the same type of vehicle Melissa Stevens was seen getting into. You know, I've, I've been racking my brains thinking if there was anything or anyone from my past that might, might help your investigation. But it was such a long time ago. I, the only thing I can vaguely remember is some guy who uh, drove a large car. What was his name? Um, Peter? No, uh, John, John, I think. Such a long time ago, I, I, I can't remember. I was, I was just a kid. Anna, there's something I want to show you. I've never shown this to anyone before. It's the only picture I've got of me as a child. Frightened little boy, successful actor. Face to face. Mr. Daniels, do you own a 1980s pale blue Mercedes? No, 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 I don't anymore. I did. It was one of my favourite cars. You sold it? Uh, worse. I was, um, I was going to, and then I had a prang in it, so, uh, that was that. I sent it to the crushers. Did you get a receipt? Yeah, 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 I did. Uh, it's here somewhere. Uh, it would take me a little while to find it. Um, uh, better still, uh, why did you just check with the company. Ashton's in Hackney. We will. Thank you. Anna, it's been a real pleasure meeting you. Right, the boss is not a happy man. Crusher's Yard just confirmed the Merc was there three days after Melissa's death. FBI have got back to us. A woman's body was found in Chicago, coinciding with the period that Daniels was filming there. Right, when was that? February 2000. Strangled with her own tights, hands tied with her bra, identified as Stella Delray, prostitute, aged 22. Bye-bye. Was he in Cornwall when Melissa was killed? Right, Alan Daniels was booked for filming that entire week, but they were behind schedule, so it's possible... You could have sneaked back up to London. Yeah, it's possible. Right, well, get back to them and confirm if you did. By the way, when uh, Daniels was in Chicago, he did some chat show, getting a copy of the dissent over. Good. Get on to Michael Parks, the profiler. I want him to see it. Unless, maybe, Travis, you'd like to take the disc home with you first. Yeah, yeah, OK. What? No, it's just that when we were leaving, you and Mr. Daniels seemed to be on very intimate terms. Hello, it's Jim Barbara. This photograph. Yeah, I got the picture from Theresa Boo's mother. That's Theresa on the end. Have a look at Bell video. Who's that? Do you have the unit driver's name? Right. I see. Gov, we've maybe got another link to the women knowing each other. Villiers and Booth. Travis, on your bike. I want you to interview Beryl Villiers' mother. I don't know. You get all the perks. First Spain, now Nottingham. All I get is his bloody laundry. Travis, thanks for seeing me. Thanks, it's all right. I'll just close up. Is this your daughter? Yes. 
That's Beryl. When she was 17. She was gorgeous. I've looked out some more for you, actually. They only found out who she was by tracing the number on her breast implants. And the worst part of it was what they wrote about her in the papers. Prostitute. Which she was never arrested or charged with being one. She and I had some difficulties. Beryl was always very headstrong. She left school and went to work in a local health club. Did she ever mention somebody called Anthony Duffy? I hardly saw her after. Not for want of trying, but... She got caught up with a bad crowd. Especially this man at her gym. Horrible man. John McDowell. There he is. He was to blame. She took off with him and... broke my heart. There was nothing I could do. Oh, no, no! Oh, no! But it was him that got her on the drugs. Driving around in his big flash car like the sun shone out of him. The last time I saw Beryl was seven years ago. I hardly recognised her. I had to bathe like a child. And she had these marks. Was she still with this McDowell? They used her, dumped her. She said she was going to London and... I never told anyone this. I was too ashamed. After she'd gone, taking jewellery and money around under the bed, I found a syringe. How could she do that to me? But I still tried to find her. I... There was an address left on a pad by my phone. A London address? No, Manchester, Shalcott Street. I went all the way there and this this awful woman answered. I said I, I wanted to speak to Beryl, but she said she'd left and shut the door in my face. Mrs Kenworth, I'd like to show you some photographs. Um, tell me if you recognise any of them. That's her, that's the woman. She had a nasty piece of work. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? It's landing in the middle of the station. All this bloody air. Shut up. That was a medic combustion. She didn't move. She just was laying there. Oh, God. Oh, God. So Mrs. Kenworth confirmed that Barbara Whittle lived at Charcot Street. So did her daughter, Beryl Villiers. Beryl's boyfriend also spent time there. His name's John McDowell. Hang on. Um, Paul, run me a check on John McDowell in Manchester. Is this John McDowell? Has he ever been questioned? Not according to her, but I think it could be the same guy that Daniels couldn't remember the name of. What? Daniels couldn't remember what? Uh, Daniels couldn't remember the name of this guy. Said he drove some flash car. I think it could be the same guy, sir. John McDowell. Oh, for Christ's sake, Travis. Why didn't you bloody tell me that before? Well, I forgot, sir. I'm sorry, it's just with all the travelling and everything... Hello? Shit. Horrible man. John McDowell. He was to blame. Johnny! Johnny! It was him that got her on the drugs. You and me! Out! I'm not going anywhere. Come on! Oh, oh, my God. God. John, love Gov, this is John McDowell, real charmer, quite a bit of previous, two counts of GBH, both on women, Fucking drug hell. dealing, well known to both the Manchester Vice Squad and Drug Unit, no known current address. I right, get Manchester to get him in. What, are we letting Daniels off the hook? You think it could be the two of them? Could be.
Travis. Hello, Anna. Who's this? Don't you recognize my voice? Uh, no, I don't. It's Alan. Mr. Daniels? Alan, please. You don't mind me calling, do you? No, no, not at all. I've actually just walked in the door. Can you just hang on a second? Sorry about that. There's a charity performance of Carmen at Sadler's Wells tomorrow night. Would you like to come? The ballet? Well, I don't know what my work schedule is tomorrow. Well, when you know what it is, give us a call. These tickets are like gold dust. Good night, Anna. Mr. Parks, do you see our letters ready for you? Do you want to follow me? Sure, thank you. Profiler Michael Parks is here. We've also got the interview with Daniels on American TV set up. Give us a minute, Paul. How did you get your number? Well, I didn't give it to him. I'm in the phone book. When's it for? Tonight, some charity do, apparently. I thought, look, if I went, maybe I could get something out of him. If I was wired or maybe a hidden camera. Don't talk crap, Travis. Wired, hidden cameras. Watch too much TV. Well, I've got to let him know. I'll think about it. Uh, Rosa, oh, it's wow. great to see you. Mm. 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 You look fantastic. Oh, thank you. No, it's, uh, it's great to be here. I, but I'm pretty sure half your audience haven't got a clue who I am. Well, I'm sure all of Chicago is going to know who you Can are you after Blue room? Diamond premieres this evening. Uh, well, that's Absolutely. very kind of you. I, I've got to say... Joan, I've got Mrs. Thornton on the phone for you. Thank you, Joan. It's a, Thank well, it's a wonder. It's a fantastic... Hello, Mrs. Thornton. And, 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 and Thank you for getting back to me. Yes, I'm trying to get hold of your husband, Roger Thornton. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I didn't... No, I didn't realise you'd recently separated. Always remember... Wanting to travel. Oh, uh, this is a murder in My inquiry, parents so. were great travellers. No, 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 no. And now, as an actor, the fact that I can uh, go all over the world and get paid to do what I love, no. right? that's, uh, it's pretty that's fantastic. Right. You are Could certainly a lucky man. I certainly am. But let me ask you something. Yes. Yes. How do you feel well, about watching yourself on film? Well, uh, you know, I've got a lot of uh, actor friends who claim they don't like oh, watching themselves. He's but, in Madagascar. Uh, but honestly, um, no, I haven't got a problem with it. Well, if I looked like you, I wouldn't have a problem with it either. <laughs> no, seriously, I I watch to learn. I really do. If you well, could get back to me within the next hour, you and that would be great. We Thank you, Mrs. Thornton. Thank you for your time. Blue Diamond, a fabulous Goodbye. Bit coming up. Let's just sit back and enjoy. Oh, we seem to have some technical trouble. Not going to fix. You must have some enemies out there. Oh, we don't need film. We've got the real thing right here. Tell me, you play a master jewel thief. Yes, 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 that's right, but uh, not a very good one. On the first day of filming, I picked up the blue diamond, which had taken months to make, I may add, and I probably dropped it. <laughs> and, uh, and it smashed on the floor into thousands of pieces, and uh, believe you me, I was not very happy. Yeah. Oh, I am not surprised. Hey, but you're lucky that you weren't proposing to anyone with that ring. <laughs> but let me ask you something. Yeah. Have you ever proposed to anyone? Well, I've been close. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at the moment, actually, I'm, well, I'm still searching for that perfect woman. Uh -huh. um, when I find her, I promise, you'll be the first to know. But, but seriously, who would want to marry an English actor? Well, let's put that to our studio audience. Who'd want to marry an English actor? Alan Daniels, anybody want him? <laughs> Oh, no, gentlemen, put your hands down. You're not included this time. <laughs> well, Alan, I think they love you out there, and I wholeheartedly agree. I, I think that you're fabulous. I think this film is very exciting. It's wonderful. Well, I'm just very grateful somebody wants to employ me. Well, I'm grateful that you found time to come in and visit with us on <laughs> Afternoon Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Alan Dan. Thank you very much. Oh. Hello again, Carl. Could he be our man? I couldn't honestly tell you. I need to know how much risk I'd be exposing Travis to if I let her do this. 
Well, if Alan Daniels is your man, in his arrogance, he may have earmarked Anna as his next victim. Well, keep that particular theory to yourself. Do you think she can get anything from him? She might. His ego is such that he'll believe he's above suspicion and he might just let something slip. So, Anna, apparently he showed you a photograph in his wallet. Yes. And he drew you in close to him by saying he'd never shown it to anyone before. Yes. So he was able to create an instant bond with you. Try to. What you have to do is, is to use that. Try to draw him out. You just might get him to miscalculate. He's still up for it. Call him. What now? No, tomorrow, Travis, when the ballet's over. There's his number. You might need to get your hair done. Got a frock? Frock? Yes. You know, something... dressy. Yeah, don't worry. I'll make an effort. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, Alan. Yes, who is this? It's Anna. Anna Travis. Hello, Anna. Hello, who is it? It's your boss. Come in. What are you doing here? Keeping an eye on you. Is it 12? It's going back tomorrow. Too right it is. I want you to be absolutely clear where we're going with this. You follow Park's advice. You offer up a few case details to Daniels. You flatter him. You try and draw him out. And you take absolutely no risks whatsoever. You understand? Good. I'll have a drop of that. The uh, car should be here in about ten minutes. Good luck.
Good evening, Anna. You look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. That's a very elegant outfit. Really? Yeah. Thanks. I got it for half price. Wore it in a movie. Now these, well, um, these I'm not so sure about. What do you think? Oh, they're lovely. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Rent a fork. Do you have any problem leaving work early today? No, no. I told them it was a family matter. Naughty. Told a fib. Yeah, well, I don't think my boss would appreciate me seeing you socially. Why? Well, surely I'm not still a suspect. No, of course not. Just the fact that you've been questioned means it's not entirely appropriate for me to be seen out with you. <sighs> so why did you agree to come out tonight? Big fan of the ballet. Ah. And you, Mr. Daniels. It's Alan, for God's sake. And thank you for agreeing to come out tonight. You really do look beautiful. We're going to have a fantastic evening. I promise. Yeah, I look forward to it. <laughs> I drunk too much champagne. We should never talk about the cases we're working on. You know, I find it really hard to believe this guy has got away with it, and even harder to believe that uh, you don't have a single clue to his identity. I mean, that said, I mean, it's bloody terrifying to think you actually had me questioned, and for a minute there, thank you, thought that I might be involved. The man must be a bloody monster. He's also very intelligent. He never leaves any DNA. No fingerprints, nothing. Christ. 
How many people has he killed? Eight. That's including the American murder. See, that's another reason why you were questioned. You were in America at the same time. My boss has been through all the dead files. Oh. Now I understand. Look, Alan, if you were to be questioned again, you mustn't mention any of this. I could get into terrible trouble. Well, of course, I, I, I wouldn't say it to a soul. Why do you think they'd want to re-question me? I thought you said I wasn't a suspect. Oh, you're not. You lived at Charcot Street and so did most of the victims. It's just... <laughs> it's a terrible coincidence. <laughs> All I've ever done... is try to pluck that from my memory. Is that such a crime? No. I was just a little boy brought up in a broth she'd locked me in a cupboard under the stairs but that doesn't make me a killer Anna. why are they doing this to me God, bloody Charcot Street I'm, I'm sorry I, I, I promised you a Good evening and, um... Excuse me, Mr. Daniels. Can I have your autograph, please? Um, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. That's a pleasure. I loved your movie. Oh, good. I'm glad. Thank you so much. There you go. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Work. Mm. Alan, this has been lovely, but I've got an early call tomorrow, so... Alan, I really wouldn't worry. They've got a new suspect. Um, between you and me, this guy, John McDowell, they found one of the victim's handbags in his flat. Thank you for no, tonight. No, 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 thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. Text. Yeah. You tell him about the handbag? I was supposed to, wasn't I? Yes, you were. So how did he react? What did he say about McDowell? Oh, well, he just said that it proved that he was innocent. Went on about his childhood all night, I mean. What, do you think he is? Innocent? I think he might be, sir. Oh, he might be, might he? Is that because you had a hot session with him? A hot what, sir? The driver reported he was all over you like a rash. The driver? Mm-hmm. Oh, undercover, was he? 
Yep. Oh, terrific. That's just great, sir. Thanks very much. Come on, Travis. I mean, all we this crap you told me about not wearing a watch. Protect me, protect me by yeah. telling me everything. Andy I mean, also Jesus mentioned you seem to have drank an awful I lot of champagne. I didn't drink anything. I had one no, glass, sir. I was working. Travis! Sorry. God, you smell nice. <clears throat> um, we'll pick this up in the morning. Good night. I heard you had a good night. It's him. It's Langton. He scratched my car. Again. God, I think I'm in love. Do you know any of these women, Mr. McDowell? Yeah, I know them. Well, can you explain to me why handbags belonging to these women were found in your flat? No. Do you recognize any of these? No. What's this squat? People are in and out all the time. We'd be surprised at who I've woke up with. They could have been no mine already. I've never seen them. Set up for something. Look, I admit having drugs in the car, but I've never seen this like for ten years. You have stated that you were only at Lillian Duffy's house in Shalcott Street. A couple of times, yeah. So, did you ever see her son, Anthony <sighs> Duffy, there? Sometimes. Well, then he was always being yanked away to foster care, and the bitch had drag him back again. So when was the last time you saw him? Around the time she was strangled. She deserved it. We all reckon he'd done it. Why did you reckon that? We had more reason than anyone else. The way she'd knocked him about. You just told me that you only went to Sharkot Street a couple of times, but from what you're saying, you seem to have been a regular visitor. Look, I was down on my luck. I lost my club, I lost my car. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. Shalcott Street. Yeah, when I was in need of a dos, that's where I went. But when did you say it was the last time you saw Anthony oh, Duffy? Jesus! <sighs> Twenty years ago. We might be dead now for all I know. So you haven't been in contact with him over the past few months? You're not listening. I just said I haven't seen him for 20 years. I'm not feeling very well. Need a break? I need a bottle of vodka, but I doubt you'll give it to me. They also found a suitcase full of women's underwear at your place. Not women's. One woman. I kept them. I loved her. I was working in Manchester when she was killed. Broke my heart. Look, I don't know anything, you know. My mind's gone. It's not what it was. I, I just worked the door at the pub. I'm paid with drinks. I, 
Do you know this girl? She's a looker. I don't know her. Where were you on the night of the 7th of June this oh, year? I just told you. God, me mind shot. I can't remember. I know exactly where I was. On June the 7th. It's my birthday. Where were you, Mr. McDowell? Held in Soliel Police Station for drunk driving. <laughs> But McDowell's in the clear for Melissa. He was in solid old bloody nick at the time. And why you couldn't have found that out, Paul, before it was I dragged him. Him. Never up him. What? Daniel's unit driver. He's been in Madagascar driving Russell Crowe. Is there a bloody point to this, John? He says he drove Daniel's to London. He was here when Melissa was killed. Pick him up first thing in the morning. We search his place again. We rip it apart. My receipts of last night. Officer, is Alan Daniels? Mr. Daniels is helping police in connection with the murder of Melissa Stevens. That's all we're going to get right now. What's this? This is all nonsense. It's all nonsense. Go, 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 go. Right, gentlemen. I want this place taken apart. Let's get on it. God, we better find something after putting him through that. I think they were tipped off. What do you think? Officer, is he going to be charged with murder? Alan, I'm sorry I couldn't get here earlier. I've been held up by traffic. Hello, look at it. It's, it's getting bloody ridiculous. They've taken everything. My, my, my scarf, tie, shoes, shoelaces, cufflinks. Look, you've got to get me out of here. Full stop. I might not be able to do that, Alan. Morning, Mr. Radcliffe. Gentlemen, please take a seat. 18th of July, 2008, and the time is 10.05 a.m. Was your unit driver... Roger Thornton. Yes, yes, I believe it was. Mr. Thornton has given us a statement saying that he drove you from Cornwall to your flat in Earl's Court on June the 6th and subsequently collected you for the drive back to Cornwall on June the 8th. He said you did not use him for the 7th. So on the evening of June the 7th, did you drive your Mercedes? Very possible. Did you give Melissa Stevens a no, lift? No, I didn't. You know John McDowell, Mr. Daniels, from Manchester. Ring any bells? Yes, yes, the, 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 that's him, uh, the, the, the man I was telling Travis about. When did you see him last? Oh, that's a question. Um, it's got to be at least 16. No, uh, probably longer, 20 years ago. And um, what kind of man was he? Well, from what I can remember, uh, flashy, loud mouth, wore terrible suits, nasty ties. Um, Ran a string of tarts from his health clubs and always was, well, always visiting her place. Whose place? L Lillian Duffy's. Lillian Duffy? Who's she? She was a... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> she 
She was a prostitute. She ran the house in Chalcott Street as a brothel. Um, he was always there doing drugs, apparently too many, because he's now a complete addict. Hmm. Were you born Anthony Duffy? Yes. Is the woman in this picture of you as a child Lillian Duffy, your mother? There you go. Is this your mother, Mr. Daniels? Yes. Whether I'd describe her as a mother or not, that's a different matter. Your mother was murdered, is that right? Yeah, I was informed she had been, yeah. A bit more than that, Mr. Daniels. You were arrested and questioned on the matter. Your mother had previously alleged that no. you had attacked her. No, no, that, that's not correct. I was released. There were never any charges brought against me. You've just maintained that you haven't seen John McDowell for 20 years, but that when you did know him, he was very successful running a string of health clubs. Yes. So, how do you know 20 years later he's a drug addict? Foregone conclusion, man. He was uh, always out of his head, drink or drugs, take a pick. How do you know his present circumstances? It was a wild guess. I put it to you that you've seen McDowell recently. And I put it to you, pal, that you're trying to stitch me up on this. But why don't you ask Anna Travis? She was the one who told me you found three of the victims' handbags in McDowell's place. We have a tape recording of exactly what Detective Constable Travis told you. She told you that we found one handbag in McDowell's place. How did you know there were three? Please explain to me, Mr. Daniels, why you stated that three handbags were discovered. No. No, I won't. If you've got a fucking recording of everything that bitch said to me, then you'll know what I said. Bag, bags, what's the bloody difference? Alan, just calm down. I think, Detective Chief Inspector Langton, it's time you either charged my client or released him. As far as I can ascertain, you have no evidence, no witness, and no proof whatsoever, bar the fact his mother ran a brothel and abused him, that my client has any connection with these murders. Excuse me. For the benefit of the tape, DCI Langton is leaving the room at 1600 hours. I'm innocent. All right, we can take out. Look, we can stop. This is going to destroy me. We we'll take out an injunction. You don't. Do you see how Langton has just re-entered the room at 16:01? Melissa Stevens's handbag. One of the many trophies found in Mr. Daniels' apartment. Please sit down. down, please. Mr. Daniels, I am now going to question you in regard to the murder of Melissa Stevens. I want Anna Travis. I don't want him sitting opposite me. You don't have a choice. You're not going to get another word out of me. 
and the sheets facing me at this table, not you. Do you understand? That is the deal. Well, why does he want to speak to me? He wants to get inside your head. It's not going to be pleasant, but I think we can get a confession out of him this way. Okay? Okay. Mike will pass the photographs over to you in order of the victim's murders. If you think you're going to come unstuck, you just give him a signal. Just give me a tap on the knee or something, okay? The last thing we want at this stage is for him to go down the no-comment route. If that happens, we're looking at months on the case, right? You follow protocol, right? Don't forget to caution him again. I'll be right there with you. It's imperative we get a full, detailed confession to these murders. Does she know what she's letting herself in for? If she screws up, the press will have a field day. You, uh, you think she can handle it, boss? Of course she can. She's Jack Travis's girl. Could you please tell me what your relationship was with the victim, Lillian Duffy? You know what it was, Anna. It's DC Travis. And for the tape, I require you to tell me. Who was she? The bitch that gave birth to me. When I was five, she put me in a bath of scalding hot water. She said she didn't mean to hurt me, she was drunk. The burns festered. And one of her bitches took me to casualty. They sent round the social services. She told them... I'd run the bath myself. When they left, she beat the living daylights out of me for causing trouble. She said that if I ever told anyone, she'd drown me next time. I had a terror of baths. Did you kill your... Don't fucking interrupt me! I'm giving you your motive, you stupid bitch. If you want it, you listen! I went to school with bruises. And broken arms, legs, teeth. She'd say I fell downstairs. If I were really sick, she'd put me in a cupboard for days without food or water. Whatever condition I were in, she could always lie her way out of it and say I'd done it to myself. Right, would you please tell me? She wouldn't let me go. Because she could make money out of me. Have you any idea how she made money out of a seven-year-old boy? Her own son? I would rape for money. She would tie me up and then watch men. Rape me. was seven. But you know what? You know what? I think I inherited her talent for acting. Oh, yeah, she could give an Oscar-winning performance of motherly love. Wait a long, long time, yeah? Before I were old enough and strong enough, before she were frightened of me. Now, now we get to the good part, yeah? The night I killed her. Whilst you were having sexual intercourse with her? Oh, yeah, I fucked her. Made sure she was watching me. Tied her hands behind her back. Sitting astride her. Like she were a donkey. And then I rolled her over. And I wound round her neck a stinking, dripping tights.
and I watched the light go out of her eyes. I was still inside her when she died. She knew me first. Did you retain any keepsake? What? On the night Lillian Duffy was murdered, did you take anything from her? Oh, I see where you're going with this, I know. Fucking brilliant. Very good. Very proud of you. Hey, very insightful. Yeah, I did. A handbag. Makeup. A few quid. Used to make myself up with her stuff. It would have turned on. You know. Why was that, Mr. Daniels? Why was that, Mr. Daniels? Why was that, Mr. Daniels? Well, I'll tell you, I know. Because it reminded me of watching her die. Do you still have her handbag? Um, no. Not hers. A few others, but you know that, don't you? I hid hers in that drunk McDowell squat. Could you identify this woman for me, please? <laughs> Kathleen Fatfuck Gagan. She were a disgusting old bitch. And that's a flattering photograph. She weighed 18 stone, the bloated dripper. piece of shit my mother. Did you kill Kathleen Keegan? Oh, I know. You bet. Your sweet little pussy I did. I'm now going to question you on the murder of Melissa Stevens. Melissa? Yeah, she was my first young one. It was because she recognised me. I had to. I just thought she was a prostitute, you know, standing on the pavement. She wasn't, though, was she? She was a young student. It's Alan Daniels, isn't it? I missed your last tube home. Yeah, I did. Well, I'll give you a lift if you like. Thanks. Jump in. So, where's home? Islington. Islington, it'll be there. I didn't want to do her, but she knew me. She gave me no choice. Why have we stopped? What are you doing? Yeah, she was lovely. Oh, she was beautiful. Oh, God, her body was perfect. Firm, yeah. Yeah, soft to the touch. Clean. So pretty. That's when I, I kissed her. You didn't kiss her. You bit out her tongue, you sick bastard. Was that to stop her screaming? Don't fucking talk to me like that, you bitch! 
sit down, Mr. Daniels. You. We're next. Kathleen Keegan, Mary Murphy, Barbara Whittle, Beryl Villiers, Sandra Donaldson, Teresa Booth, <sighs> Elma Del Rey. What about the other Americans, yeah? Where are their photographs? Sadie Zadine, Marla Courtney. Ah, you didn't know about them, did you? Where's my beautiful Melissa? Where is she? What you done with her? the tape. Are you admitting to murdering all these women, Mr. Daniels? Oh, yeah. But I don't want to talk anymore. I'm tired. I want to sleep. I want to sleep. Interview is completed. 10.05 p.m. Mr. Daniels, please. Ladies and gentlemen! Great work, everyone! Well done, All right. I feel like keep him here tonight, and he's over the magistrate's court first thing in the morning. There'll be a lot of press outside. Dinner tonight. Dinner. Yeah, with me. Not free, yes. Shake free, no. Boss. Boss. Downstairs, now. Christ knows where he hid it. It's bloody tricked out. What a fucking mess. He's still alive. I think so, sir. We've called an ambulance.
When the truth and the tellers were busy. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I think the whole thing is just a complete disaster. Someone's going to pay for this, so you better make sure our house is in order. They say I'll be all over it. And I don't intend to be the sacrificial lamb. Dad would have been proud of you. What a fucking mess. So I guess that's dinner off then. Maybe next week. Yeah, maybe it's not such a good idea, sir. It was only dinner, Travis. No, it wasn't. Good night.